Well, welcome back. Um, this lecture is going to go on and talk in more depth about the dermis and the hypodermis. Um, before I do that, I want to, to say that I, I, as I was talking about the stratum spinosum in the epidermis, I forgot to mention a couple important points that I want to make sure I get in here. So I'm going to tell you here in the lecture. Just as a quick review, remember, this is the dermis down here in dark pink. Um, above it is the stratum basal, the first layer of the, uh, the epidermis. This is the stem cell layer that does all the mitotic division and produces everything above it. And then right above it is the stratum spinosum. And, and I was talking about the tight junctions that are formed uh, to give it its mechanical integrity. That's important. And all the keratin that's formed inside, uh, making them waterproof and, and you know very tough. Uh, and that, that is all important. I, I just forgot to mention that you also find within this layer specialized cells called Langerhans cells. Uh, and these cells uh, act in a way to phagocytose anything that might make its way somehow through here, a bacterial cell or something like that, any kind of infectious agent, uh, foreign agent that ends up making its way all, through, all the way through to the uh, stratum spinosum will be met with these Langerhans cells that phagocytose them and, and destroy them. And, and more generally, they're referred to as macrophage, as a type of macrophage. Macrophage meaning phage phagocytosis and macro meaning big. So they sort of you know function in this area to do that. So I want to say that. And also, I wanted to point out that in addition to making keratin, these cells are also producing a kind of glycolipid that's secreted between the cells and, and helps to make them uh, helps to make them waterproof as well. So I had neglected to mention that when I talked about spinosum, and I wanted to make sure I got it in. So that's that. And now, with uh, what I would like to do next is talk about the dermis. Um, but let's just remember the stratum spinosum cells eventually become stratum granulosum, where they're making this keratohyalin in these granules. Uh, if it happens to be soles of the feet or the surface of the palm of the hands, that it'd be thick skin and have the stratum lucidum. And then later, the stratum corneum, all cells have it anywhere between 15 and 30 cell layers thick. All dead cells filled with keratin is the outermost surface of your body. But let's go now into the dermis. Okay, what underlies the epidermis? So this next slide shows you an actual micrograph of the dermis. And so I want to talk about two specific regions. One is the papillary region, that's this outermost part here, kind of pinkish in nature. Uh, and this is, this is the papillary region of the dermis, uh, fairly thin in nature, uh, and it is only uh, made up of areolar connective tissue, loose areolar connective tissue. Now, if you remember that from chapter four, uh, are, areolar connective tissue has these kinds of cells known as fibroblasts, and here you can see the fibroblasts, these darkly purple stained cells, and they are producing extracellular proteins, that is proteins that are secreted out of the cell. Here, in this case, elastin and collagen, and they're loosely arranged and they provide kind of a cushioning, uh, and, uh, and they, are, they are what these ridges are made of. These are called dermal papilla, these papillary region, dermal papilla here, and another one here, and another one here. And these actually kind of push up the, the superficial epidermis. Uh, and that creates these ridges on the skin, which are your fingerprints. So the dermal papilla on your hands uh, will produce these fingerprints here. And then there's another ridge there. It's hard to see here. But basically, uh, the dermal papilla correspond to your fingerprints. Anyway, this is the papillary region. Again, fibroblasts that make elastin and collagen, and what is loose areolar connective tissue. Now underlying that is the rest of the dermis, and this is the rest of the dermis. You can see it's much thicker, and it's made of a far more dense style connective tissue. This is dense, irregular connective tissue. And as you recall, you probably recall that dense, irregular connective tissue is also secreted by fibroblasts. And you can see them here as well. These little purple guys, these are all fibroblasts that are secreting outside of them these dense uh, you know, groups of connective tissue. And this is, again, going to be elastin uh, and collagen. Uh, and it gives a very, very densely packed nature within here. 
Now, the reticular part of the reticular layer of the dermis is also very, very well vascularized. And also, it's hard, it, although it's hard to see in this particular picture, you would find blood uh, vessels running all through here, as well as lots of nerve endings running all the way through here. Again, not easily seen on this particular micrograph, but yeah, this is highly vascularized, lots of nerve endings in the dermis. Remember that the epidermis is avascular. Uh, and it is the dermis where you find most of the blood in your skin. Um, and those will have capillaries running up through the papillary region as well. Up in the papillary region, not only do you get these blood vessel capillaries up here, but you'll also get lymph capillaries. You also have nerve endings up in here. Sometimes you even find uh, adipocytes, little fat cells up in here. Not many, but you'll find some of them as well as some macrophage type phagocytic cells, which are sometimes found in the papillary area as well. Um, and finally, and, and I think interestingly, there's also typically a kind of receptor that is nestled up into these papillary re regions called a Meisner's corpuscle. And I, I don't have one pictured here, but the Meisner's corpuscles are receptors that are connected to sensory neurons. And those sensory neurons, again, carry information back to the brain and really talks about What's happening at the surface? Is it being touched? Is, is there pressure there? Is there abrasion? So the Meisner's corpuscle is an important receptor as well. Again, found in the papillary region. But the papillary region and the reticular region function together uh, in a way to provide this protection that the skin is, is uh, providing to the body. Uh, again, light from here down, all is the dermis. The surface, here, the, the superficial layer is called the papillary region. It forms into these little uh, bumps or, or ridges called papilla, uh, dermal papilla, right? And then below it is the dense irregular, okay? And now below the dermis, you will find what is referred to as the hypodermis. And so here, down here, hypo means below dermis. Again, here, this is all the dermis. This kind of light pink here is all the dermis. Down here is the hypodermis, below the dermis. Up here is the epidermis, meaning above the dermis. So the whole skin is kind of uh, defined around the dermis itself. That's the primary component. So above it is the epidermis, below it is the hypodermis. And then this is muscle tissue down here, okay? So not part of the skin at all. So the if you notice, the hypodermis is almost entirely made of adipose tissue. All that yellow you see here is adipose tissue. A lot of fat stored in this area and it provides cushioning uh, to the skin. You'll also find around that fat loose areolar connective tissue. So like you found loose areolar up here in the dermal papilla, you also find it down here in the hypodermis. But the hypodermis really is an area of fat storage and that gives you the cushioning that your skin really needs. So together, the hypodermis, dermis, and epidermis provide a, a lot of protection uh, in the way we talked about earlier, both kind of a cushioning, uh, prevention of abrasion to structures below, a waterproof nature, preventing water from escaping uh, you know, deeper tissues out of the body and also taking on extra water. And most importantly, or, or equally importantly, provides that barrier between uh, the, the rest of the body and the outside world so that bacteria, viruses, other kinds of things don't have an easy route into the body. So, so yeah, so that's the dermis and the hypodermis.